how can we actually implement the set and map ADTs? In this discussion, I will only talk about how we implement the set ADT. And the reason for this is that any given set ADT implementation can easily be transformed into a map ADT implementation by just storing the key and the value instead of just storing the key. So basically we would have a set implementation and we would do all of the implementation details with respect to the key. And then just at the moment of storing the element or at the moment of retrieving something, we would just also store the value. In practice, it's very common for people to only implement the map ADT and then have a wrapper set ADT implementation that simply stores dummy values. But either way, those two thought processes are equivalent. So in general, we're just gonna talk about storing a set of elements. And if you wanna implement the map ADT, you would just also store a value along with it. So the first potential data structure I'll talk about is the unsorted linked list. So remember an unsorted linked list, we just have a bunch of nodes that are strung together in a chain. So we have a big O of N worst case find or remove operation. We might have to theoretically search through all N elements of our linked list before we find the element or we fail to find it. However, because we're not maintaining any sorted order, we have a constant time worst case insertion. We can just arbitrarily add to the beginning or the end. And this is just a constant time set of pointer changes. However, also because it's unsorted, I could theoretically iterate over the elements that I'm storing, but it would be some arbitrary order. They wouldn't be in any necessarily meaningful order. Um, they could be in the order in which I inserted them. So that might be nice, but they're not gonna be sorted alphabetically or anything like that. The second implementation that I'll discuss is a sorted linked list. So a sorted linked list, instead of just doing the simple constant time insertion at the end, I'll actually scan my linked list upon a new insertion and find the proper insertion site such that it maintains sorted order. So let me actually draw some examples. So here, let's say I had three, then one, then two, and I wanted to insert the number, well, let's say actually instead of two, let me make this a four. If I want to then insert two, I would go all the way to the end and, or I would just arbitrarily add it to the end. However, with a sorted linked list, let's say I have the numbers one, three, and four, and I want to add the number two. I would have to start at the beginning and actually iterate over ed, uh, every single node until I found the insertion site. So if I have n nodes, I might theoretically have to iterate over big O of n nodes to actually find the insertion site. So it's big O of n for finding because even though they're sorted, linked lists do not have uh, random access, so I can't perform binary search. So I still have to iterate over all of the n elements to find, the, uh, to find an element. And then because finding is big O of n, removing is also big O of n, and inserting is also big O of n. However, one nice feature about this over the unsorted linked list is that now I can actually iterate over the elements stored in my set in increasing order. Or I could start at the tail and go backwards and that would be in decreasing order. So that's a nice feature that this would have. Next, let's talk about the unsorted array list. So an unsorted array list we have some array list that I'm just arbitrarily adding, let's say three, one, two, and let's say the next spot is empty. Finding an element in this unsorted array list is big O of N. I have to theoretically look over all N of my elements to find a given element. Removing an element is also big O of N. I have to potentially look over big O of N elements to find what I'm removing, and I might also even if I get lucky, I might still have to move over big O of N other elements to clear out that empty space. However, it has an amortized constant time insertion, which is nice. I can just add to the end in constant time. And even though I might have to resize it, which is 
a big O of N operation. If you amortize this over all of the different insertions, it's big O of one amortized over all the insertions. So we have constant time, constant time, constant time, constant time, big O of N. Constant time, constant time, constant time. It becomes roughly big O of 2N. Uh, sorry, it becomes basically to do N insertions, we do roughly 2N operations. Uh, so divided by the number of operations we did is roughly constant time per insertion. So amortized is constant time to insert. But again, they're not in any given order. So I can't iterate over them in any clean fashion. A sorted array list would have big O of log N find. Let's say I have my array list. One, two, three, it's sorted. Finding an element, I can use binary search. So this would be big O of log N. Removing or inserting an element would still be big O of N because I might theoretically have to insert or remove at the front, which would cause me to shift over a bunch of different elements. But one nice feature, so in addition to having a faster find operation, I can iterate over my array list in sorted order. So I can actually iterate over them in increasing from left to right or decreasing from right to left order. The next data structure I'll talk about is a binary search tree. And specifically, I will only talk about a self-balancing binary search tree because it doesn't make sense to implement a non-self-balancing binary search tree if I want to store a bunch of elements. Yeah, so I have a big O of log N time complexity for finding, inserting, and removing elements. And I can iterate over this in big O, uh, uh, I can iterate over it very quickly in sorted order. So let's imagine I have three, one, and five. I could do an in-order traversal of this BST, which would iterate over all of the elements in increasing order. And I can just kind of reverse my in-order traversal. So instead of doing left visit right, I could do right visit left to iterate over them in decreasing order. So everything is big O of log N, and I have some sorted order over which I can iterate over my elements. And then the last one I'll talk about, which is in practice, one of the more common ones to use, is a hash table. A hash table is constant time in expectation. So the average case time complexity for a properly designed hash table is constant time. We'll talk about what properly designed means in a separate video. But just assuming it's a good hash table, it should be average case uh, big O of one time complexity. However, I might have to first perform a big O of K hash function. So if I have a string of length K, so let's say this is the length of my key. So I have a string of length K, for example, I would have to perform a big O of K hash function before I can do my constant time expected, uh, my constant average case, insertion, find, or remove. Also, I don't have any sense of order with respect to these values. So with a hash table, the numbers are in any theoretically arbitrary order. With my sorted linked list, sorted array list, and self-balancing BST, they were in increasing or decreasing order of values. And even for my two unsorted lists, they were at least in the order of insertion. So even though I don't have any increasing or decreasing information about this, I know three was the first element to be inserted, one was the second element to be inserted, four was the third element, or at least even if I don't know, even if I remove some stuff in the middle, I at least know three was inserted before one, which was inserted before four. However, with a hash table, I don't even have this insertion order information. I don't have any information about any order, theoretically. And as I mentioned, each of these different set implementations can be just transformed into a map implementation by just storing a value as well. I'm going to briefly finish off this video by just mentioning that in C++ and in Java, uh, we have unordered set and ordered set classes. Um, in C++, the ordered set is just called set. 
and it's implemented using a red black tree. And in C++, we also have an unordered set, which is implemented using a hash table. So in C++, we have two different implementations of the set abstract data type. One implemented using a red black tree and one implemented using a hash table. And generally this is fairly common in many programs.